Hello and welcome to my Trials of Fire Cataclysm 10 guide. I'm your host, Mefu. So I got around 40 hours in this game, so I decided to make a guide to help out anyone that's struggling with Cataclysm 10 or any of the lower cataclysms, and even easy, medium, or hard. So anything I say on this guide will translate to any difficulty you're playing on and help you out, hopefully. Right, so we picked the standard quest, which is a Trial of Fire, which is the default quest you can pick, and it's infinitely replayable, roguelike, if you die, you're dead. And with having no modifiers at all, so no game modifiers at all. So this is a standard Cataclysm 10 run. So over on the party tab, I found this team performs the best for me personally. So I put the Elementalist as my damage, the Warrior as my tank, and the Warlord as my support. So I found that in this game, it's best to have one person doing damage, one person tanking, and one person playing the support role. Because if you try and do everything with everyone, it just works out really mediocre and you become jack of all trades, master of none. So, the elementalist, the passive it has is the first uh, card you play each turn costs one less willpower. It's really good for like buffing yourself up straight away and also for getting out damage spells early. Because in the early game, it's probably one of the hardest parts of the game before you get any gear. Then the warrior has taunt once per turn after you play a card and adjacent to an enemy you get to defend two on all other heroes. This is really, really good for mitigating damage and keeping your HP high because on the high cataclysm, you literally lose HP really fast if you make a mistake and it's really hard to regen it back up again. So over to the support. The first time you play a card, each turn gain one willpower. Once again, this is really good for the early mid game and even the late game. This is good all, all round. So every time you play a card, you get that one willpower back. So normally on the Warlord, you'll be buffing people up as your first turn. And it's just really strong to uh, have that kind of ability on it. So I put the game length at short. It will showcase the early, mid and late game in a quite, quite reasonable, quick manner. It has two bosses in it and it's the best for this kind of guide. So the starting items I take on my heroes are Mystic Kane, Force Field, One Willpower. Defend two on all friendly characters. So this is really strong if you don't have a buff or anything to use on the Elementalist at the beginning of the uh, fight. You can literally cast this so you can mitigate some of the chip damage because a lot of the enemies are ranged attackers and they'll just chip away at you until they get close. Because you don't want to waste all your willpower, all your cars running towards the enemy just to have them smash you about. You want to kind of line of sight them and wait for them to come towards you until you're ready to attack them. Then the warrior, I take serrated bone ability grapple, two willpower cost, pull target enemy within two spaces and melee attack five and inflict defenseless. This is really, really strong in the early game because you pull them towards you, it means you don't have to go towards them and get like completely ganged up on. It hits for five damage, which is a lot in the early game. It's actually a lot. And it also inflicts defenseless. So this stops them from getting defense on their next turn, which is really, really good if you're trying to focus something down. So on the Warlord, I take another Mystic Cane. I don't think there's any other good choices on uh, the Warlord because it is the support character anyway. So most of the time when I'm done buffing up stuff, I will be casting this constantly because uh, Defending two on all friendly characters is actually a really, really strong uh, ability until they get an upgrade. Before we dive into the action, I just want to show you what we're up against on this difficulty level. So we've got easy, we've got medium, we've got hard, and we've got kata 1, which is the first modifier. All enemies gain 15% health. Kata 2, enemy team gets one willpower every turn. Kata 3, 50% of bosses' cards are graded. Kata 4, Less health regained from resting and consuming food. Kata 5. 50% of elite cards are graded. Kata 6. Bosses gain additional 15% health per tier. Kata 7. 50% standard enemies cards are graded. Kata 8. Bosses draw one additional card every turn. Kata 9. All enemies gain an additional 10% health. And then Kata 10. All bosses and elites cards are upgraded. So that means the bosses and elites have the best cards in the game, as well as all these other modifiers. So all these other modifiers are all in Kata 10. So Kata 10 has the most modifiers and is the hardest difficulty in the game. So if this guide ends up helping you even the tiny, smallest, incy, wincy bit, please hit that like button, hit the thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's begin the journey. So, Settlement is dying. Yep, follow in her footsteps. Here we go. So, the first thing I like to do when I start a new game on Kata 10 is try and find a battle as soon as possible because the more the days go by, the harder the battles get. So, if you find one really early, it's really beneficial because you will upgrade or level up your characters a lot quicker. So, it's attempt to find a battle. Ooh, 100 gold. It's going to rush through the quest dialogue, have a quick skim over them. Off to help them rebuild the structure. I don't think that's really worth it. I lose food or I lose my gold and I get a 33% chance of reward. That like one out of three, I'm gonna refuse that. Screw that. I'm gonna keep looking for this battle. Come on, let's go. Still day one. 
Here we go, battle, side quest. Let's have a look at what we got to deal with here. Three bandits. Okay, they have ranged attacks, but it's not too bad. So first things first, we... Oh, not do that. We buff up there. Try and keep one card back as well, because it gives you more options for the rerolls. Always try and keep one card back, especially at the beginning here. It's always good to have that one card there. So we'll do the same here. Buffer this. Discard that so it gets armor. She gets armor. And then here we will discard that one and place that. So everyone's got one card here. You'll see why in a second. We'll leave everyone where they are as well. So it's no point running towards the enemy. Because they will just absolutely annihilate us. It's better to let them walk towards us and waste their cards and willpower. So the attack. Okay, this is our target here because these two have um, armoured up. Right, so let's see what we've got to work with. <clears throat> so on our supports, we have a march. We have a force field, mitigation, we've got grapples. Repair, okay. We haven't got many attacks on her, which kind of sucks. Um, I'm trying to see what we can do. Hmm. Right, so I think the play here is do that. March. So we're going to run... Oh, actually, no, we're going to put that here. Put that there. So it's because the Elementalist starts off really weak, but she gets absolutely insane later on. So at the moment, we're kind of going to go for the uh, lane tactics. So we're going to grapple him into this, so everyone gets a combo. Bam, 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 combo. And then for my next trick, I will do the same with her, because her is like, it costs no mana, so I might as well. And then I can hit again as well, which I will. So I will discard this one, smack him. Then I will buff her up again, so she's got willpower. Discard that. I don't really like those spells so much. And I'll cast the force field. But everyone's got armor now. Okay. And then end turn. So I'll keep, those, keep a card each on each of them. Once again, so I've got options. Okay, that's cool. That didn't even attack, that's cool. Okay, so... Either one of them is pretty good. There's not much armor between them, like, difference-wise. Uh, let's see. So we need to get behind here. Do you have anything to do that with? So this is what I mean. Keeping an extra card gives you more possibilities. So here, I might discard... No, I'm not going to discard, actually. I'm just going to move there. I'm going to use the Inspire on her as well. So this, at the moment, is hitting for free. With the Inspire on her, it's going to start hitting for four. That's now hitting for four, as you can see in the text. Four damage on all of them. I um, don't think there's anything else I can do to buff her even more. So we'll just hit that. There we go. <clears throat> Pretty good damage. Then I'm going to discard these two and re-roll them for another one. Yeah, I got it. Okay, nice, sweet. That's another four damage. That's, that's actually she hit for eight and now she's hitting for another eight. Okay, they're all both quite low. I've got that buff off as well, which is cool. I'll save that for now and see what I can do on the warrior. Um, I need to move her closer, but I can't. Hmm. If I had another grapple, that'd be pretty good. But I'm just going to go for this. So everyone gets the shield because of her passive. And then for my next trick, I will have a quick look at what I can do on this. Not a lot, once again. But if I move to about here... Get power shot off and then discard one of these for the wild swing and hopefully that'll finish it. Nice, okay. So I leave everyone with No, actually I'll discard that because it's getting towards the end of the fight now. I can just start discarding turtling up a bit more to make sure I stay around for for uh, defense just to make sure they don't attack me and get my HP low. It's really hard to regen HP on this uh, difficulty level. Okay, that was good. It took the damage there. So now let's have a look what we can do. So we're going to inspire the warrior because the warrior is like probably the the biggest carry in the early game because the elementalist carries the mid late game she's just good all around early mid and late but the warrior is our early game carry so we put it on there and then let's start start with grapple start that and smack again and that fight was pretty much a flawless fight with no damage taken there victory Okay, so let's take the gold. 
What we get here? We've got some armor, battle stance. Oh, I'm not so keen on this. I don't like to take cards uh, or take items that will just dilute my um, card pool with a load of crap. Like that battle stance pretty shit. So I'm actually in two minds about equipping it. Um, I'll see what I can do. I might be able to put it on the support possibly. So she can use it or the support can use it on the elementalist. But we'll see. Right, so out all the people I level up normally first will be the elementalist because she needs better attacks. Because as I said, she, does, she starts off really weak but gets really strong later on. So she needs all the level ups first. So I normally go her and then the tank and then the support. Cause support's pretty good anyway and you're not expecting her to do damage. So let's go to the elementalist. See what we've got to choose from. So we've got Inferno, which is pretty crap. Uh, Storm Conduit, which is... Uh, it's okay. It's just, I just don't like using those power cards on her because I want her to do damage, not keep supporting and buffing. The Windwalk isn't too bad. Because um, you can literally fly over obstacles and stuff, so it's actually not, not a bad ability there. But the Ice Block, even though it's defensive spell, she needs a bit of defense, even one's good. And it inflicts chilled, and chilled's a really, really strong uh, debuff. And it gives six defense, and allows her to move. So it does everything, everything you want it to do. So we'll put it on, in the order of crapness here, the crappest is the swipes. And then it goes Force Missiles, and then it goes Unstable Blast. So you kind of want to remove or change them out in that order. So got rid of one of the swipes. So escort him back to town as a side quest. Yep. So the side quest is one day away. So we'll start traveling to it now. So we'll get another level up quickly. It's always good to get level ups right at the start of the game. Before the next fight as well. Grab that. What's this? Attempt to something like that. That's a scour. So try and avoid taking any risks on this difficulty as well. I need to put that armor. I'll put it on the support for now. Just because... She hasn't really got that much better, anything better to do than that. <laughs> Let's go over to here. So we're going to level up the warrior next. <clears throat> the tank. See if we get something good. So on the warrior, the card order I normally go in, I get rid of the adrenaline straight away because I really don't like that. It takes like a whole turn to buff it up. And then I take away the wild swings and then I get rid of the swipes afterwards. So that's not my order. Get rid of adrenaline, get rid of the wild swings and get rid of the swipes. So out these cards, <clears throat> whenever you defend, nope. That one's not too bad, if you've got nothing better than that. Uh, Savage Blow is okay as well, but I normally take the tackle. Weaken is a really strong debuff, especially on a, on a tank. You want to turn her into a tank, so I'll replace it like there. So I got rid of the first, that power buff thing. Kept the Wild Swing just in case I need the extra damage, so confirm. <clears throat> Continue. Oh, gold, nice. I'll have that. Can I sell as well? No, I can't. Okay. I can sell here. So I sell. Check how much food I got as well to make sure. Anything good in here? I normally try and grab a shield, like a shield that does um, does damage according to what your block is or your defense is at the time. So I try and look for a blue shield with that on a lot of the time. There's nothing really decent here. Right, so I need to rest up. So with the resting, look to hone your abilities to try and remove stuff like this. Like if I get a chance, I will remove that battle stance off this. Just so I don't need to cast it. I have it like clogging out my deck. And I can't upgrade anything yet because I don't have any materials, otherwise I would. So I'm just gonna rest normally. And then I'm gonna look for another fight before day three starts. So off I go to find another fight. So these hard battles are just a bit hard. So they're not worth doing, but I'm gonna do one anyway, just to show how hard it is. So I try and avoid the hard battles because they give you a lot of mobs. These ones aren't too bad on this um Later on they get a lot stronger when they get the casters and the chard. But at the moment they're not strong because they're all melee. So I might be able to just outplay them with the uh, debuffs and stuff. Right, so battle stance. I'm going to try and get that off straight away so it doesn't clog up my um, hand. So I'm actually going to do a massive taboo or something I said not to do. But I'm going to discard a lot of stuff just to put that on. Alright, put it on her as well. Hmm... Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so everyone's got a bit of armor. I'll leave everyone in the place because they're melee. They're not going to attack me anyway. Otherwise, I'll be running behind this little cover here, this little rock. So let's let them all come to me. They shouldn't have any ranged attacks that I know of. You better not. Well, they actually moved in pretty quick there. Damn. They cover some distance and then some. Right, so 
let's start off by seeing what we can do in the support first. I normally, in my order of where I look to play, I look at what the support has, and then I look at the damage dealer, and then I look at the tank. Because obviously the tank's not in range properly, so there's not much point. And the support always needs to go first normally, to buff up the elementalist. So otherwise, if you do them backwards, you'll see why. If you put that on afterwards, you'll be like, oh damn, I just missed out on tons of damage. So always do look at the supports first, then the damage, and then the tank. Right, so I looked at support. There's a fair amount I can do on there. I will discard that swipe because there's no need having that. Cast the ice block so I put chill on these guys and run away because that gives me movement there. The tank's kind of in the way because I want to move to that tile there where the tank is. So I'm actually going to charge this in. Oh, no, I can't actually. I, mean, I can. Hmm. This is difficult. So I'm actually going to put her there. I will charge the tank in here so it puts the weakness on both of them because it only affects the adjacent targets. And then for my next trick, I will discard this one because obviously I can't hit in a line here. And I'll hit with this instead onto the one that's closest to me, which is this one. Okay, so I got rid of that debuff, or the buff, should I say. I will move this closer. And then I will actually grapple here, I think. Can I grapple, like... Well, that's difficult, actually. I try to grapple so they all get, like, combo attacks off. I guess if I do that... Damn, no, it's not gonna work. It needs to be, like, there. Okay, so if I move there... Then move that there... Then I can grapple that in, and that should finish it off, because I grapple that in, and they hit four, two each, or one each, I mean. But I don't think that'd be enough still, actually. No, I don't think that's enough. I need a bit more damage than that. Let's just grapple it in, anyway. Okay. That wasn't enough damage, but it's not too bad, still. So we'll do that. It's good to just reduce the numbers as uh, soon as possible. To reduce the damage output. They weren't doing that much damage because they debuffed heavily. Okay. They've lined up nicely as well for the um, elementalists here. So if I can look for damage. So what I'll do here is I'm actually going to re-roll all of this. I'm going to start looking for Inspire. Yes, I got it. Okay. So if you hover over, you can see what's left in your deck as well. And what's coming out. And what's going to be in the next one. So I'm going to put it on um, the elementalist. So her thing, because she's got um, the battle stance on, plus this, she's actually hitting for 6 damage now. As you can see, she snowballs out of control pretty fast. So we're going to hit that on these two here. Boom. That's really low already. So, let's have a look what else is in our deck. So in our deck we've got Cantrip and Advance. So if we reroll those, it's going to be Cantrip or Advance, which is a bit... Rah. Don't really want that. So we'll discard that. Can we get a good damage on that? That's quite, that's quite a lot of damage there, isn't it? Maybe we should, um... Nah, we can't. Let's try and have a look. I think I might be able to finish this, so let's try and hit there. Okay. Discard that. Put defensive stance onto the warrior, so after it attacks it gets uh, defense. And then that should be able to finish that. Yep. Okay, that's perfect. So, these guys got a lot of armor already. I'm actually going to use that to give the warrior an extra two armor. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to move in here and start attacking him properly. Unless I'm moving away. No, that means she gets attacked. Except like the warrior takes damage. <clears throat> so, there's one. Okay, nice. I didn't combo attack. This is good. Okay, combo attack on that. This is what I mean. When they start going up like that, damage builds up really quickly. Okay, so I've got another blast. I can hit for five on both of those. So I need to move in range of that first. Um, Trying to look what the best way of moving is. I think the best way of moving is probably to... Move there. And move there. Because that way, now when I move the warrior in here as well, I can get some combo attacks off. Bam. <clears throat> Probably don't even need to move the warrior in there, actually. I can just discard the exhaust, hit that, and then she should combo attack that. Now, the warrior 
can actually move in here and get some damage off. So, defense on them. Okay, should be able to finish it actually. Yep. So they're out of there. Another successful fight and another level up. So we've got our support to level up now. Check all that. What are these gloves? The attack still bonus damage equal to the cost of the previous non-move card played. Not a bad card, actually, that. I will put that on the elementalist. Oh, no, 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 no. What am I talking about? I'll put it on the support. Then the support can put it on the elementalist. So the support doesn't waste, um, the elementalist doesn't waste cards on that. Right, um, so who leveled up? Yeah, support. Okay, so let's have a look. So in the order of here, I get rid of the swipes first. And then I get rid of the, oh, actually, no, no, that's a lie. That's a big lie. I get rid of the power shot first, then I get rid of the swipes, then I get rid of the inspires. And everything else, the march, the leadership, I kind of up, I upgrade the leadership and I keep the march normally. So over here, let's have a look. Defend four and grant expire to all friendly characters, not bad, that's pretty strong actually. Um really attack two, grant expire to all friendly characters. Single out's pretty good. Come and present each other friendly hero draws one extra card at the end of the turn. That's really good for getting the elementary small cards. So I'm actually gonna put that in for the power shot. So I've now got two or probably three buffs, including equipment powers. Right, so I think there's something next to us here we can get, if I can click on it. There we go. Right, start digging up the graves. So it's 50% health damage, 25% epic war, 25% legendary war. So my odds are like a, like a, I don't know, one in, one in quarter chance of getting a legendary pretty much. So let's start digging it up. Uh-oh. So I just took random four damage. It's good to take some risks though, because if I got a legendary there, that would have snowballed the um, run pretty hard there. Especially if I got an elementalist legendary. That buffed her a lot. Okay, not a lot to do here. I will pick up some more food though while I can. Because food's really important. Just to keep resting up and keep your um, your freshness up. See if there's anything good here. So that's the shield bash I'm looking for, but I'm looking for a blue version of that. Because that's quite strong, but it's cost quite a lot to go for what it is. I'm quite tempted to take it anyway. I'm just going to double check what her abilities are. No, she doesn't have enough uh, armor yet to make that a good ability yet. So I'll leave that for now. Let's see if I come across something else. Okay, so shelter. I'm about to lose my freshness here. So I need to rest up before I lose that. I'm not worried about the quest at the moment because th this guy will absolutely annihilate me if I go at him right now. I need to power up more. So I'm going to rest. Use some of that food I got. The wavering debuff's not too bad. It's when it starts getting below the wavering, that's when you got to start warring. But the more you move towards the quest marker, it'll go away. It'll start charging back up again. Right, so let's look for another fight before we find that, before we fight that boss. Um, climb the wooden beans to do so. Uh, I don't like any kind of injury in it. Injury is really, really screws you over. So if you see injury, normally avoid it. So I'm going to avoid that. It's a bit of a waste of my my energy there, so I'm going to keep walking this way, start walking towards the quest, get this up a bit. If we head towards the quest and get this up a bit, we get more chance of getting epics. So let's start going to there. More food, what else do we get here? Um, upgrades. I think I'm just going to grab the food again. Yeah, food's really important. I'm just going to grab food. I'm going to go here. Nothing really decent here again. Uh, Tempt to grab more food actually. I'm pretty greedy, but I'll keep I'll keep it how it is now. But I will uh, rest up again. So unfortunately, I have nothing to upgrade or hone yet. So I'm kind of like it's kind of wasting food in a way because you want to always be doing something when you're resting, not just uh, resting for the sake of it. You can also uh, drag food over to your characters if you feel like you need to get them up quicker. So as you see, I'm now determined. So I got a chance. Oh. Use container. I don't like this one because this one always results in damage. So I always avoid that one. 66% chance is very high. So as you can see, I'm determined again. So I have a higher chance of, um, or I have more armor. I have more redraws and I have a higher chance of getting epic loot, which I was trying to say earlier. So I head towards this. This should be a battle. I'm still determined because I'm heading towards the quest marker. So hanging from a branch, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. Demand that the man free the life drake, battle a new follower. Okay, let's do it. New follow followers are really important. This battle looks like it's going to be quite tough as well because it's got a human shaman in it. Which makes it pretty difficult. Um, okay, let's see what we can do. So start with support. But they're really far away. So the best thing to do here is to do that. 
Get rid of that one as well. Leadership onto the support. And then uh, defensive stance onto that. She can just like give everyone armor. Like I said, she's got nothing else to do. I'll do that as well so they don't attack her. They normally go for the ones with low HP, but they might go for her because she's got the lowest HP here. So let's give her the extra armor. And I'll just end my turn there. Keep the one card so everyone's got four cards in the next turn. There we go, yeah, I see. Hopefully they won't. Oh my god, it's a massacre. Okay. I'm getting scared. <laughs> I don't want to lose her straight away. That would suck. Right, um, so over here. <clears throat> checking the sport first. Ooh, yeah, okay. So what I need to do is move that there. I'm not in range of the grapple yet, but I can move in here and weaken them both. And weakens a really good um, ability. So I'm actually going to go do that. So I weaken them. I'm going to start moving her closer as well. You know she's going to get her ass kicked. It's good to do this. Just as so she's ready to start airing stuff down. Okay. Um, I could cast that now. I think I will. Yeah, I might as well get all the buffs out of the way while I can. Because once the battle starts, I'm not going to want to start buffing whilst they're in my face. That's going to suck. Um, so over here... I'll put the common Presence on the support, so the others draw the extra card. And then I will give everyone the armor again. Such a useful ability. Discard that, so I get another armor on there. And then, because this guy's got no armor, I'm actually going to drag him in. So he gets defenselessness on him, so he can't get any defense on the next turn. I'm not scared of them doing damage because they got weakness on them, so I'm going to end that turn. I'm saving the Inspire for- oh my god, don't do that. Okay, okay, that's not, that's not too bad. Not too bad, I, I was panicking a tiny bit, but not as much as you might think I was. So, I'm going to discard... Oh shit, she got debuffed though on damage because of the chill effect. Discard that, I will march. I will then inspire her, so get rid of that debuff. She can then move one step because she's chilled, so I'm going to move there. And then for my next trick, I'm actually going to discard that. And then... Chill there. Move her again to here. She's got a lot of armor now. Okay. Move that there. No, here. Because if you move it within range here, he's got to pass by this, but he's got to take two movements to get to her. If that makes sense. He's got to pass. He's got like, It's kind of like a check. Like He's got to make sure he checks that, then walks out the range. Because if otherwise, if I don't have this in the path, he can just walk straight through. So let's just start smacking like this, to be fair. That's just free damage. I might as well just keep hitting. I could even inspire. Yeah, I will inspire. I've kind of changed my plan on the fly, but it's good to stay uh, adaptable. Okay, let's put that on the support. The support's the less light, or least likely one to get hit. I need to move this closer as well. That'll be dead at some point, but I'll put that there just in case I need to back that up. Okay, so I'm actually going to put that there to block the path completely now. So he has to really walk around to get to uh, the Elementalist. Ow! Jesus Christ, that damage. This is what I mean, on this on this difficulty, you, just, you die really quick. It's really fast. Fast and furious. Okay, we need to actually start rushing that, because that's getting ridiculous. Him just firing out shit like that. So let's see what we can do. So check the support. Uh, I might put the support in the harm's way just so he has something else to hit apart from the elementalist. <laughs> that's starting to really suck. So we'll put that there. We will tackle as well. Move you in range. And then you hit for free. Free's not that good. I wonder if we put that on you instead. Your abilities are all really chunky. Let's see if we can re-roll these. 
Nice, okay, so we've got swipes. So it's actually better to put it on the warrior. Because now, he's going to be hitting for four on each of these swipes, which should be able to finish this off. I wonder if we can get a bit closer still. There we go. Now we're getting combos off as well. So bam, bam. Bam, bam. And because we got combos off, we are extremely powered up. I'm going to run this away to make this come over here towards these guys. And then for my next trick, I will discard that. Only that. Keep one card ready for next turn. Because of the fire damage about to hit me. Okay, that's good. Okay. Right, can we get the warrior close enough to grapple? That is the question. The warrior's doing a lot of damage now. Hmm. I mean, I'm quite tempted. I'm going to see what I can get in the deck. I do have a march in there, so I can, like, as you can see, I could most likely be able to get that if I'm really lucky. So here we go. Redraw. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. But that's not a bad debuff there. Debuff, I mean power. So we've really powered up the warrior now. We'll move her close. We'll then put the warrior in range. To about there. Grapple. Massive damage. Everyone gets uh, armor as well. Discard that. I'll move her in range, but not so much that she's going to die. Give everyone armor, because I can. That's going to walk through there to check. Can't just run straight to her. Unless it's got some sort of ability that bypasses. Okay, that's good. Attacking the tank. Right, so now we can literally just finish this off. So I move that in range there. Ready for the combos. Warrior's got wild swing. So, boom! It's out of there. Eight damage. Okay. Lost a lot of HP, but wasn't too bad, to be fair. That's just like, there's nothing you can do about that sometimes. So we've got a helmet. Not a bad helmet, actually. That is really good on the warrior. Because that exposed, uh, will, if you put it on like a multiple group of enemies with the LMS's damage, that hits really hard. So, we'll go to the warrior. Put that on. And head rush isn't too bad as well, because it gives you a lot of armor for the tank build. So, we'll level up the LMS's again, because the most important character is our carry. So, <clears throat> once again, I try and get rid of the swipes first, then the force missiles, and then the unstable blast. I will upgrade that as soon as I get Mystic Curb. So, Storm Conjurer is not very good. Charged weapons, meh. Evocations, okay. Um, it can be really strong, but it's just a bit chunky, a bit heavy to cast. I love draw power. It's, this is probably like an S tier card. Look at the top, tier car, uh, top two cards of your deck. Draw one and reduce its willpower cost to zero. Really strong, especially for these massive spells, and later on you get even bigger spells. So I will put that in place of this swipe here. And then after that, I'm going on to force missiles and taking those out and then vice and then carry on going from there. Right, so uh, let her free. Take the cage with your life stroke. Seems too useful to leave behind. I'll take the follower. So this life stroke thing, uh, one health restore when using food to heal a single hero and one fewer mystic herb to re uh, required to heal an injury. This is a really strong follower. It's almost as strong as the honed one. There's a one where it allows you to hone for free. That is the strongest one. If you ever see that one, make sure you take it straight away. So after that fight, I'm going to rest. Right, so we need to look for more fights on the way to the boss. So we're keeping our determined because we get more loot that way and redraws and armored. So because we're heading in the general proximity of the boss, we're still keeping that. So let's go look for a fight. Ooh, carrots and herb. Nice, okay, that's a good find. That's what we needed. Just what we needed. Okay, I'm looking for a fight. We need to level up these characters as fast as possible. So what we got here. We got our oh, spirits. Okay, spirits are pretty tough because they go invisible. When they go invisible, you can't attack them until you go in range with them until they break their stealth. So, uh, because we've got Elementalist, we actually have advantage in this fight because the Elementalist can, like, hit anywhere in the AoE tiles. The area of effect. Whereas normally, we'd have to move close to them in melee range to be able to hit them. Right, so what we've got here, we've got Might. Start with Support. Um, attack still bonus damage. Okay, so we'll do that. Put that on the Elementalist straight away. So you can get that buff. I'm going to discard all of these, all these attacks, to see if I can get something else. Ooh, okay, that's not so good. Drain power. Yeah, I'll take that buff. What I'll do is I'll put that power onto the support, the um, Warlord. 
just so they don't just all focus down the um, character with all the buffs. Because normally you put all the powers on one character, they're just going to go and absolutely annihilate that character to get those powers off. So if we spread them out a bit, then it's okay. Because I don't actually need to have that on the Elementalist to make it work for her. Right, so we discard that, give a bit of armor. Uh, yeah, there's not much else I can do here apart from just that. I guess I could try and reroll to get a buff on uh, the warrior as well, which I will do actually. I didn't get it, I didn't get it, so that's a bit of a waste of a reroll there. Okay, let's end turn. Let's see what they do. So, yeah, see, so they go stealth, and as I said, you can't attack them until you're in melee range. So he's going up there. That one's running towards there, so they're going for the buffs. They're going for the powers. Okay, that, ooh, that, wasn't, well, that almost came off straight away. It wasn't too bad, though. Right, so let's start the support again. Always try and start the support and then do everyone else's turns. Because if you, if you start attacking with these guys first, you're going to regret it most of the time because you're going to miss out on the buffs. So, okay, we've got battle starts. We need to get that off. So, let's discard that. Discard that as well. Put that on her, the elementalist, so she gets the two more power and uh, she gets defense as well against this, uh, these very angry people coming towards her. What else can we do? So we can ice block her as well. We can blast. Blast for five. <clears throat> it's not too bad. What I do is. <clears throat> God. We move here. No, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Let's not do that. I'm actually going to move into them to see if I can get this ice block off to chill them. Normally I've run away, but because I got the ice block off, they've actually got reduced damage now as well. So I should be safe there. And now I'm actually going to charge uh, the warrior in here as well to debuff them even more, so I'm extra safe. The defensive stance on the warrior. And then for my next trick. Put that on her. Discard that. I'm going to hit one of these. Probably the one that can be comboed here. As you can see, it's it's, she's turning yellow, so it means you'll hit as well. Okay. And I got rid of the stealth as well, because I had to be in range to do that. So I will... Probably leave that there, actually. I'm tempted to move her forward more. No, I'll leave her there. Hmm. Trying to see where they would go where I could reposition for like a big blast with this. But it's doing seven damage now. So it's actually hitting pretty damn hard. If I move to here, that should move in there. And I can move here to get a seven damage on both of those. A bit of uh, like manipulation of positioning works with wonders in this game. But no my luck, because I've said it, it's not gonna happen now. There we go. So that's just how I planned. Also, it stops the combo now because they're surrounded. So, if I can actually move her twice, I need to move her twice. Can I move her twice? Yes, I can. Okay, so I move there. And then, I'm actually going to discard all these. Might keep that one because this is going to get really nasty in a second. Let's re-roll. Come on. Come on. What we got? Okay, Inspire. Inspire is pretty good, so I'll give it on her, so she's got a uh, bit more damage. I will discard the force field. Step here. So because I manipulated the positioning of them, so they would actually walk up here, I've managed to hit a free or a free attack AoE here for 8 damage on all of them. As you can see, it hit pretty damn hard. Took off their buffs as well. So now... Oh, I could even expose there, actually. Maybe I could. Maybe I should. Expose everyone, make them discard a card. Didn't realise I had that. So I'll do that first. Then discard that. And then blast them for 9 damage, should it be? Yeah, 9 damage. Okay. So everyone's now super, super, duper low. Okay. I'm going to discard that. This hits for 7. It's not a very good ability, this one. That's why I recommend getting rid of this, because... It hits for seven, but it doesn't. The, the, the other attack is only hitting for one still, so it's a bit like, oh, what's the point? So I'm just going to insta give the. I don't know. Probably. Probably this one. OK, 
Okay, that knocks off that as well. That's good. So the reason I actually did that one is so this one can move in here and get a combo attack off. So if I move there, the warrior can hit this for free. Oh, she's hitting for free anyway. I can't remember why. Well, it doesn't matter. But anyway, that would have died because I would have hit there and then she would have comboed. So anyway, it all works out for the best. Okay, they're moving in. Put damage there. It's not too bad because I made them discard cards, so it's all good. Okay, so I can move in here. And for my next trick, they are out of there. As you can see, like positioning manipulation is really important. Like you make them like position how you want them to move. Rather than the other way around, it really helps the fights. Especially with this kind of setup. Curse isn't too bad. Gives defenselessness on a lot of the uh enemies. Right, so next one I'm gonna level up is the warrior. Okay, so tackle's really good, as we know. Because I've already got it here. Bulwark is very good as well. And so is Counter Strike. Counter Strike is actually really strong. Because you draw another card and you do 4 damage. So it's actually quite a difficult decision here. I'm actually going to take the Bulwark. And I'm going to replace the Wild Swing for that. Because getting armor on the warrior is really important. Just keep her tanking. Keep her alive and healthy. So I'm going to take that. Okay, I need to rest up here as well. So because I can meditate now. Most of the time, I don't use this for injuries because I try and avoid injuries if I can. So I'm actually going to meditate and I'm going to upgrade ability. So I'm going to look through really quick at what needs upgrading. So that goes to minus one, uh, goes to one w, uh, WP, willpower. So it's not bad. That goes to one as well, which is actually good. On her, that goes to one. You haven't really got anything that's worth upgrading here, apart from maybe this tackle. Bulwark doesn't really do much for what it's worth. So, I will actually put it on this card here, because that gives me one extra card, which is technically, or two extra cards, and it's two extra willpower. So I'm actually going to upgrade that, because that's a really strong ability, that one. That's upgraded, so now it costs one less, so I can use it more, instead of discarding it, like I normally do. Let's walk this way. Oh, there's a thingy here, let's go there. Okay, agree to his quest. What quest am I agreeing to? Uh, you put the man out of his misery, I gain a trait. What kind of trait is that? Would that be a good trait or a bad trait? Gain a spy, draw a card. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Tankers will gain a trait. Cool, yeah. That's a good trait, actually, that one. Good trait, indeed. Yeah, so it means that she can move for free now and get a card back, so that's pretty good. Right, so let's um, see if we can sneak in some more fights before we go to that boss. Okay, so what, Elven Temple, new follower, yep, that's a good choice. Followers are always good. So we've got the Forester, move through Forest Tiles at full speed. It's not amazing, but it's uh, better than a kick in the teeth. We need to rest up again. So we do that. Unfortunately, we can't upgrade a hole in anything, so we literally have to rest for like nothing. Which really sucks, I hate doing that. I think we can sneak that in as well. Ooh, going to Wavering. Ooh! Okay, so agree to escort her back to her hometown. Yes. Yep. Your hometown is two days away? Fuck. That's not cool. We really are wavering now. Ooh, okay. Battle legendary uh, reward and food. Yes, let's do that. Legendary rewards, always try and go for them if you can, unless you really are going to die. Because uh, a legendary can really carry the game uh, with some of the passives. Right, so let's see what we've got. So we've got the support again. I can't... This is the... This is kind of elite or boss, should I say. It's a boss. that I need to get close quickly because it'll just keep running away. So I'm actually going to do the ultimate taboo, which is run towards the um, the enemy. Because otherwise it's just going to keep running away from me. So I'll put that on. Uh, run you towards as well. Run you towards, but I'll put you behind a pillar because otherwise it's going to get dangerous. I wonder if I can actually move you up. No, you can't grapple. Damn. No, I'm just out of range of that grapple, which kind of sucks. Tempted to put the armor on as well. Yeah, I'm gonna put the armor on just in case. Okay. 
yeah. This one spawns uh, duplicates. If you just hit the duplicates, they just disappear. Um, so I'm going to try and do that now if I can. It's not very good. Because I lost the, uh, what's it called? The buff, whatever it was. I get less redraws now, as you can see. So I can't even redraw this. Okay, so... Trying to see what the best course of action is. Probably to discard the Unstable Blast. Move close to this one here. Going to discard that one. The cantrip on her. I'm not going to bother inspiring yet, because not much point. So I don't know what the real target is yet, so I'm going to fire that off. Okay, so the real target is that one. Run that in. They both got armor. Then I'm going to put that on the warrior and then grapple just to stop this from uh, armoring up again. So now I've broken its armor. Tempted to defend here as well, because, yeah, I think I will. I don't want to take any risks. So everyone's got a lot of defense now. Okay, so a card. Three, yeah, okay. So it was worth uh, defending there, because otherwise it could have got really hurt. Okay, so it's draw power. Normally I start with the support, but I've already seen that she's got quite heavy cards. So I'm going to see draw power and see what I get. Yeah, normally draw power reduces the cost of cards, and obviously I've just drawed like two zero cost cards, so it's not really that worth it. I'll put that on the support so that I don't get the focus attacked too much. Okay, so. Let's see what we can do. I have to discard that, which sucks. I also need to move you closer again. I need your willpower. I need the willpower. So, okay, I'm going to put that on the support. Okay. And this, I should be able to just discard that. Move here. And then Fearsome Shout. Which got rid of the clones because it's an AoE. It doesn't have to be attack. It can be anything AoE. But I got rid of the clones and now I know straight away it's that one. Okay, so I can actually discard that. I'm going to move close. I'm actually going to get rid of that defense as well. I'm going to ice block here. Just put double debuffs on. Okay. Still hits pretty hard, you know, he's debuffed by that chill effect. Okay, so I can tackle here to see if I can get the right one. I did. Okay, sweet. So this is the right one here. Now I can actually start trying to put some damage in if I can. So I'm going to move her a bit closer. Support. Okay, that's what I can do here. I can chill again, which I will at some point. I need to move this one a bit closer still. The march. Okay, so I'm going to try and get combo attacks off here. So, first one. Next one. And another. Okay, so I got rid of that evasion thing. And then, on my next trick, discard that. And I will actually hit the ice block again. I saved that card there, I saved that one there. So I'm gonna position the warrior over here so it checks it. So now when he walks, he can't just walk straight out here. He has to walk there and then walk again. So he's literally stuck in between us now, like a sandwich. Like a boss sandwich. Okay, so, okay nice, that's good. Okay, so he just runs away this one, he's so annoying. Okay, nice, I think I got the right cards here again. So I'm gonna go for a tackle. Okay, nice, that's that one. Right, so might or leadership. Mm, move her up. I'll put might onto the elementalist. And then draw a card. 
Might as well see what I get. Okay, grapple again. That's cool. Draw power. See what I get again. Draw power. Stable blast. I'll take that. That's a zero mana unstable blast, which is nice. Okay. Let's move you in position. If I put her there, I can combo attacks off as well. So, we'll blast here, I think. Nothing else we can do, is there? No, we'll blast. Okay, blast again. Then we'll grapple. So this one can't get armor anymore. We'll swipe as well. Okay. Discard that. I don't think I need to armor up again, because I think they got enough armor. So I'll put leadership onto the... I don't play a card at another friendly character game. Yeah, onto support. Okay. okay. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. So have I got any AoE again? Not really. Okay, we'll, we'll draw power first. Normally we start with support, but we'll draw power, see what we get. So draw power. Force missile, okay, that's uh, zero cost, so we'll just cast that straight away, I think. Put Inspire onto the Elementalist. Increase the damage a tiny bit. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be the middle. <laughs> that guess, though. <laughs> I had no way of knowing that, by the way. That was just pure luck. Absolute pure luck. Okay, so we'll rush this in. To here. Discard that so I can walk that in. So I've got a surround again for the combos. Combo attacks. This is going to hit for six. I will take that. Knocks off the buff as well. Wait in a second, it will. There we go. And another. Four. Okay, it's getting very low. Everyone's got pretty good armor. I will discard that and hit again. I'm hoping it'll go for the other two and not the support, because the support's got really um, low armor at the moment. But very good HP. Nice. Not bad. Ow. Okay, so we've got battle starts back up towards the end of the fight. So what we'll do is we'll charge in here. Here's some shouts. Okay, so that's that one there. Now, we need to get her close, so we need to discard one of these. Probably gonna have to be Force Missile. That's close enough. Discard that. Move you closer to about there. That's a stance from you. Okay, so now, because about to start, I'm hit for seven. So I'm gonna hit that. I'm gonna move this close. And I'm going to do that, and that'll give more armor to them as well. Oh, I already, I already moved, I just realized. So it's coming towards the end of the fight. I want to arm up to make sure I take at least damage as possible. Because now I don't need to rush any damage out. Because it's about to die. Okay. So have I got anything to... No. Apart from the force missile again. So I'm moving to range. And hopefully I'll hit the right one. Damn it! It's not too much anyway. Okay, gonna move that into range as well. And swipe. And the boss is down. I barely took any damage there. Just gotta use a bit of like tactics and it's, just, it's fairly easy to take them down. Okay, so carrot, carrot, material, material, gold. I didn't actually equip that book. I should probably do that. Okay, so let's check out the legendary item. What have we got to choose from here? So we've got. Kosh Blade, whenever you perform a combo strike. This is quite good on a melee setup. If I was playing with the Assassin or something like that, it would be quite strong. Every time you move more than two spaces, gain one damage for the rest of the turn. Once again, it's quite strong on the Assassin or the Warrior. The Warrior is going more damagey. And now we've got Burning Effects doing an extra one status damage. This isn't that great, but Immolate's pretty damn strong. Curse is pretty damn strong. And Life Siphon is OP as hell. It does free unblockable damage. Um, it hits all targets in the indicated area and it draws a card for each target hit. So if I hit like three people, I get three cards back. That's either free willpower 
or more attacks. So I will take the book. And plus, the Elementalist is going to be our carry, our hard carry. So we want her to be really, really overpowered. So put it on her. These are all really good abilities. Curse is good. Life Siphon is good. Immolate's pretty good as well. They're all pretty decent. Especially if I get draw power on one of them and make them cost zero. Really strong. Okay, so let's level up our support. What will we get here? We've got Tenacity, gain one damage to all attacks per named effect on this character. Tuck your hero, draws melee attack, something, something. Gain two protection on friendly characters. This is pretty good. This is a pretty good ability. It may look like crap, but it's almost like a dispel. You're dispelling any sort of negative effects and you're also raising their resistance and stuff. So we will put that on the swipe. We'll get rid of another swipe. I don't really like the swipes. I normally take the swipes out and then the inspires on the support. And then, yeah. Okay, so we need to rest again and we need to start heading up, I think, because I think this is too far away to reach that, unfortunately. Oh, we can hone an item here. The fearsome shout's actually pretty decent. Um, tempted to hone this one. I'll keep that for now until I get the other abilities and eventually I'll get rid of this whole item. So I'll just uh, hone this and get rid of that because it's just, uh, it's just filling up my uh, my card pool with a load of crap. So we're going to head up because we're actually wavering now. Um, God, I'll walk all the way around. Please don't make me die. Ooh, okay, cool. So if this hits the bottom, you die. You just, you that's the end of your run. So I've actually got to try and take on this boss now. Am I rested enough? I think so. Or am I? Should I try and sneak one more in? I'm going to try and sneak one more in. I'm pretty close to the place, so I shouldn't die. That's injury. Don't want to do that. I'll take that, though. Anything here that's useful? The husk isn't too bad, but I don't want to use the elementals to summon creatures when she's hitting like a truck. Okay, so we're going to head to the... Oh, no, we're not. Oh, that was close. That was close. We need to rest, otherwise we're going to die. I think we can upgrade here. No upgrades. Nothing else we do, so we'll rest. Okay, we're heading to the first boss, so we're literally reaching mid game now. This is mid game of this short run. Okay, so the boss does range attack, still one damage. We haven't got much cover here apart from over here, unfortunately. So check the support. Hmm. We'll put that on the support. So these two draw more cards. This is going to get dangerous already because I can see that I can't get to the cover in time. This is going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. I haven't got many redraws because I didn't get my um, meter up in time as well. Okay, so we'll move that there. Now actually, I'm going to keep it armoured up there and hope for the best. Yeah, I'm just going to hope for the best. I'm going to keep life siphon on me as well. Put that there. Rush this straight into it to armor these two up. Okay. So now, hopefully, it will focus the warrior. Jesus Christ. Yeah, hits like a truck. As you can see, that's why I want to close the distance. It made her, um, her, made the spider waste a card getting away from the warrior and not taking these buffs off that I just put on them. So now, let's see what we can do. Normally I start with the support, but once again, let's draw a card first. We've got ice block and that's for zero mana now because of drain power. So we can actually use that straight away. Put a chill effect on the spider. That stops it from doing more damage and moving too much. Let's uh, move to about to there. I should be in range of this. Okay, now let's put might on as well. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, that's correct. Let's do that. Put might on the elementalist. Then we need to get you closer as well. Start that crap. We'll hit this first before we move the warrior in. Draws a card. 
repair. We'll put it on the support because it's the furthest away from harm. We can armor up as well. We're going to use one of these wild swings to move in onto the spider. I think there's good. Okay, then we'll bulwark. Stop the warrior from dying because dying really sucks in this game. Let's guard that. Armor up again because this thing hits so hard. It's scary as hell. Discard that, discard that. We'll grapple, stop it from armoring up again for the next turn. Keep that on the support and hope for the best. Hopefully we'll go for the support. Yeah, there's not back. Don't do it! Okay, cool. That's random. Nice. It's spreading damage, which is good. It's chilled as well. Remember, this is actually a chilled effect spider. And it's still absolutely destroying people. Okay, so we've got regroup here. That's a good spell to cast. Let's just check what we can do in the... Okay. Not a lot. Not a lot. If I had a reroll, I would have rerolled here to try and get the battle stance buff to put on the elementalist. That's good to have right at the start of the fight. So we will expose the spider. Make it discard a card. So now I've got three instead of four. We will also tackle it. Oh, no, we won't. No, we won't because we might get hit if we do this. Okay, we'll wait now. We'll wait. Okay, so let's move this to here. We want like with this boss, you want to stay in range. A lot of the bosses you don't want to stay in range though. Like you want to actually stay away, otherwise you're gonna get fucked. So we'll put that on the support. Discard that. Regroup. Okay, now so what we can do here. Immolate's decent to use first, because it'll get rid of it out my my pool as well. Of abilities. Discard that one. So we're gonna emulate the boss. Should hit quite hard. Yeah, it hit like a truck there. As you can see, it hit for eight, then it hit for four. And then it's also put a debuff on it. So I'm also gonna flick this. So I don't need to worry in yet. Stop it from armoring up again. Move it in range. Move the elementus in range as well. I mean, I could have used that as well, but I think I'm just going to discard that. No, actually, I'll keep that. I'll keep that on me so I can re-roll it in case I um, need something else. Okay, hit and run. Knocked off one of my buffs. Oh my god, that's that. <gasps> Ooh. That's really, really strong. Okay, drain power. We get, okay, take ice block again, make that cost zero. We'll move over here. Might as well ice block straight away. Put the debuff, debuff back on the spider. Then we need to get the warrior close again. So we'll do that. Um, need to make sure I'm kind of in range here. I'm just going to move away to here. No, actually. Because I can move close and get some combos off. Yeah, I'll move close. Okay, now we need to get that cast off as well. So we'll move the warrior here. Okay, put the battle stance onto the elementalist. Okay, elementalist should be hitting really hard now. Seven damage. So let's stop it from the armor again. Took fire damage as well. So that was six. Okay, spider's out of there. Ooh, quite a tough uh, little boss fight, that one. Not the hardest one you could get, but one of the strongest if you have the wrong setup. Okay, so that's what we've got ready. Not bad. We've got another legendary weapon as well, which is good. We'll have all the heroes. We'll start with the elementalist. Right, so here. Um, Storm Corner it's not that great, Ice Fire Aura is okay to put on the Warrior, but it just, you can see the power of it, it's quite low. Earth Grab is really good for utility, but Ice Sance is strong, as you've seen the chilled effects, it, it stops their movement and it stops their damage, so it's really good. So I'm actually going to replace one of these Force Missiles with, because these Force Missiles are rubbish when they're scaled up. So we do that. We've got the Warrior next, this is always the order I go in when I'm leveling them up. So over here... Uh, Intimidate's really good, inflicting weakened as you can tell, it stops them from getting combo attacks and stuff and it also uh, 
Reduce their damage by three. That's really strong. Counter Strike's good as well. Because it gives me card draw. Um, I'm going to take the Intimidate. Just to keep the debuffs flowing. I need to keep them flowing. And I, I replace the, uh, as you can see, I replace the other Wild Swing. Because these things, this cost so much. And as I said, you only want one person doing damage. You want the Elementus to, to do all the damage. And not everyone doing all the damage. So, let's get rid of that. In certain setups, though, it is good to go damage warrior in certain setups. Okay, now for the support. Right, so on the support, uh, we got this, defend four, we got melee attack. This is not bad when you got the melee characters and stuff. Then you got um, all friendly characters get two movement. This one's pretty strong as well. It's actually quite a good buff, that one. But this is the icing on the cake. Once this gets upgraded, you don't even have to be within uh, three spaces to get that plus one all attack damage. So you imagine how strong that's going to be on the warrior and the elementalist, because that's just permanently on. So what we do is we start replacing these inspires, because it costs the same amount as an inspire, but it stays on, it doesn't fade off the next turn. So we replace this inspire here. Actually, we can even get rid of the swipe instead. Yeah, get rid of the swipe. And we're looking to upgrade that as soon as possible, so we don't have to be really close to everyone. We can just like, be halfway across the map and still get buff. So we'll confirm that. Okay, continue. So we got, oh, okay, nice. We actually got a fairly good shield for the warrior, I think. So I was after that. So we got block, oh, it doesn't have the um, the one I wanted, the ability I wanted. If we gain defense this turn, gain the same amount, gain, okay, it's not too bad. If you would lose defense at the start of your turn, this power, lose one resilience instead. It's, it's not too bad, I will equip it anyway. Uh, it hasn't got the main ability we wanted though, the one that does damage, uh, depending on your defense. Okay, so over to here. Nothing else we could do. Okay, the legendary weapon, I forgot about that. Okay, so, let's have a look. Whenever you play a power on another character gain one willpower, it's not bad for the support. It has quite a lot of supporty kind of, uh, yeah, like, stuff on there. Any attack that deals six or more damage ignores defense. It's, it's better for, like, a burst character. The, yeah, the Elementus won't be doing that kind of damage for a while, but it would be good uh, later on on her uh, and that just gives me the legendary crafting material this is actually really good this ability or this not this ability this um, <laughs> legendary item here if you put that on the warrior the first time your talent triggers each turn refresh it that means I've got like a permanent armor increase just going to double check that quickly make sure I've got nothing better Pay some shout yeah okay cool so let's actually grab this so every time the, um, the warrior attacks anything adjacent it gets armor if it attacks again it'll get armor again so um, yeah, that's pretty strong to keep everyone alive. Really, really good legendary, that one. 